After a disappointing finals loss and drama-filled offseason, the Celtics have come out this year firing on all cylinders, sporting the league's best offense and overall win total halfway through behind head coach Joe Mazzulla, MVP candidate Jason Tatum, and a roster filled with talented guys. One of them is of course Jalen Brown, whose continued progression as a two-way star helps elevate this team to new heights. Brown's a lethal weapon in the open floor. At 7 points a game, he lands 4th in the league in transition scoring. His positioning away from the ball is great, getting wide or darting down the middle to fill out space for easy angles, almost playing the role of a wide receiver as he runs with ball handlers to catch and finish with momentum. Notice how as Boston begins to run, he makes sure to get all the way over to the sideline. This not only gives Smart more room to push the ball, but himself an easier attack angle to put it down for a tough layup. He loves to get to the slot for quick attacks like this, exploding downhill when the defense is out of position and scrambling to recover, as there's less paint resistance. He can also get the ball early and push the pace himself, and it's in these spots where he can showcase his strong driving game. He's just so relentless, aggressively looking to apply as much pressure as possible at all times. He'll create lanes for himself with quick changes of direction, building up momentum before changing course with strong crossovers or his go-to, the in and out dribble. He uses his lengthy strides extremely well to open up space on the finish at high speeds, stepping through gaps around defenders or moving them out of the way entirely with a classic Euro. Even when there's no obvious attack angle, he can use power to just bully his way to the rim, boasting an incredibly strong lower body that also helps him remain balanced and score through added contact. His ability to get deep into the paint at high pace like this of course frees up running teammates as well, as that initial pressure coming at a defense that's not properly set up can lead to breakdowns. He pushes the ball like this in semi-transition as well building up ahead of steam where perimeter defenders aren't prepared for those bursts of speed and directional changes. On this possession, the Clippers have seemingly recovered, with all five players back, but he just turns on the Jets for that patented in and out to move Jackson out of his path to a wide open dunk. It's not just in the open floor where he does a good job at driving into the heart of the defense though. In a slower, half-court setting, he's still very effective. That explosiveness allows him to blow by slower-footed defenders, changing speeds with an awesome hesitation dribble to set up these attacks. His handle is real lengthy, which has both its benefits and drawbacks. For one, it allows him to cover more ground and exaggerate his movements a bit more as he changes directions, but it also hurts him in tighter quarters, where he tends to pick up his dribble early for more ball security. Once that space is created, again, it's those timely strides that allow him to step right into finishes, and if those gaps get cut off, he'll use his offhand to initiate contact for some more separation. OG Ananobi does a great job at closing off the opportunity at a left-hand drive and stays attached to the hip, so Brown uses his lower body strength and off-arm to just bump him back as he goes to a short floater. His willingness to initiate and go through contact also helps him get to the line at a decent rate, where he's having a career year, making 79.5% of his free throws. From a standstill position, he's still a huge threat to get to the rim like this, using jabs and pivots before exploding off that back foot, and he'll even take advantage of smaller defenders with a little back to the basket game. In that painted area, not only is he capable of finishing through traffic, with added contact, or with a short floater, but with mid-range jumpers. He loves this escape dribble from under the basket to create separation for fadeaways, balancing his slashing game with in-between scoring really well. According to Thinking Basketball, he's taking 7 mid-range shots every 75 possessions, and hitting them at a very accurate 49% clip. Again, you'll see him use his offhand and lower body strength really well to create space, initiating contact and bumping defenders before pulling back. Out of drives, he likes to slam the brakes with jump stops where he can either fade away or use his pivot to spin back to the outside, and many of his makes are off balance like this, whether that means falling away, turning around, off of one leg, or any combination of the three. 
When he's attacking left, towards the middle of the floor, he commonly goes to this drifting, one-legged fader. And all of these tough shots kind of embody these outside layers of his scoring, needing only minimal separation to get quality looks off. He's also comfortable shooting with momentum going forward or downhill. Running pull-ups are a big part of his arsenal, where he's got a pretty quick trigger that allows him to capitalize on really small windows of opportunity. This of course helps him a ton behind the arc as well, where again he'll shoot off of step backs or without complete balance, but is also really effective stepping right into them, often off of screens. Over the last three seasons, he's hit 41% of his wide open threes, meaning that defenses have to show some some sort of resistance in the high pick and roll. In these actions, he can apply pressure at all three levels, pairing off the dribble shooting with those explosive drives extremely well, helping him to an efficient 1.04 points per possession. While an increased diet of self-creation has helped him really come into his own and ramp up his scoring volume, part of what makes him such a good offensive player is how he can slot right into an off-ball role and play off of other creators. Similar to in transition, his feel for positioning himself is phenomenal. This pick and roll between White and Horford sort of fizzles out without a big advantage created, so Brown dives from the corner to fill out space in the middle where he can flow right into an easy jumper. He's also an outstanding catch and shoot option with some real versatility. Boston loves running him off of screens and movement where he can free up for quality three pointers and these become a lot harder to guard when the guy on the receiving end is also so good at attacking off the catch. Notice how as Brown's going to get this pass, he very quickly recognizes a potential driving lane, instantly putting his head down to duck in for the lay. He'll often use one or two dribble pull-ups on the move for a cleaner release, and when all of these skills come together, you'll find him just obliterating closeouts. This is huge within the context of the Celtics. Their entire roster is filled with guys who can put the ball down and make plays, and the scheme they've implemented maximizes that to near perfection. An initiator will knock over the first domino that forces defenses out of position, whether that's drawing two in the pick and roll, or with a blow by at the point of attack, forcing longer rotations and scrambles. Then they'll kick the ball to a shooter on the outside who can handle the ball and make decisions, and it'll just keep going as they break down defenses multiple times in one possession to hunt out the easiest shot possible. Brown being the aggressive slasher with the scoring skills he has is a nightmare to cover without a proper setup, generating paint touches at a high rate where he not only puts it in himself, but can kick it out for some more of that team creation. Playmaking has always been a question mark for Jalen, but he's still capable of incrementally serving as that first advantage creator. Limitations as both a passer and ball handler do hold him back from consistently initiating, but he still capitalizes on the pressure he applies as a three-level scorer fairly well. He's got a pretty nice drive and kick game, freeing up shooters who can knock it down or attack, and from the middle of the floor he does a decent job of finding teammates in the dunker spot. On occasion, he'll even leverage that scoring threat to open up passing options like a true playmaker, here starting a drive and leaving his feet for a floater to make a second defender contest before laying it down to Rob for a wide open dunk. He's not Luka Doncic out there, but he's doing just enough to keep the offense afloat in minutes without Jason Tatum, producing a 117 offensive rating with juiced up production of almost 32 points every 75 possessions on nearly 61% true shooting. Brown's offensive package alone would be enough for me to put him in consideration for all-star territory, but it's what he also brings to the table on the defensive end that makes him such a great secondary star. Before we get into that though, I want to give a quick shout out to Basketball Index for helping with this analysis and the making of this video. If you're not familiar with the site, they provide tons of statistical measurements, tools, and easily accessible graphics to further guide your understanding of the sport. They offer talent grades on pretty much any aspect of the game you can think of, and through their player profiles tab, I can easily compare them to other players around the league. Using Brown's finishing as an example, on this page I'm presented with various metrics detailing his ability to create and make these shots, along with how he stacks up against his peers. 
This is just one of the many useful tools found on the site to help guide me and many others through their analysis. And by signing up with the code VENUE30, you can get 30% off your first month subscription. I'll leave a link in the description below for anyone interested in signing up. And with that being said, let's take a look at Jalen's defense. Boston has two key staples in their defensive strategy that stand out and maximize their personnel. The first is their switching, and Brown plays a huge part in the ability to do this. Of course, he's primarily matched up with wings and perimeter creators, where he makes great use of his 7-foot wingspan and active hands to bother ball handlers. That length allows him to alter shots or make plays on the ball, even when he can't match the foot speed of quicker guards, and he closes the gap on contests really well. He also has that lower body strength, allowing him to maintain position and preventing him from being moved off his spot by bumps or initiated contact. It's that sturdiness that helps him switch across the board, stonewalling bigger wings, forwards, and occasionally even post players, having some utility at each position. He's even pretty good at navigating screens, meaning he can defend at the point of attack or as a chaser when necessary, just checking most boxes when it comes to man defense. Away from the ball is where you'll find Boston's second key staple, their aggressive gapping. One of Jalen's flaws on defense can be remaining fully aware or quickly processing plays as a helper, and by placing him in a prime position by nature, some of that mental load is taken away. Here he can rely on his tools to make plays. That combination of length and quick hands allow him to deter drives well, even occasionally taking the ball away entirely. He's comfortable taking risks in these spots. He'll send some sneaky good doubles that can blow up actions or lead to transition offense going the other way, and he does a decent job at reading passing lanes. He also offers some legitimate rim protection from the wing, pretty much doing a little bit of everything. And that versatility is just perfect for what the Celtics are trying to do. I wouldn't say he's competing for an all-defensive team by any means, but it's still a pretty strong positive, especially in this particular situation. And when paired with his three-level scoring arsenal and role flexibility on the offensive end, that's enough for me to label him a strong all-star caliber player and one of the NBA's best second options. If you enjoyed this breakdown, make sure to drop a like, subscribe, and turn my post notifications on to be first on more content. If you're interested in my more in-depth research, make sure to check out my website and social media profiles. You can find those links in the description. Feel free to let me know down in the comments what you think of Brown and just how good you believe he is. As always, I hope you all have a great day, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.